Hi guys, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Quite a lot to go through today, but we'll start off with the US 30 as ever. Volatile session yesterday, touch potential support at 16.738. Um, sorry, 16, we are drifting a little bit lower down today, just below that 21 period SMA. Most global markets are pressured this morning, especially the Germany 30 uh, has come off a, a fair amount in the last couple of sessions. Uh, still at the stage where we just think it's profit taking, but there's been more data coming out of the US that look quite weak. Um, but then again, we did have another Fed official come out with uh, a statement yesterday that was a lot more hawkish about US interest rates. So I don't think the, the market really knows exactly what's going on right now. I don't think they know what's going on uh, either at the Fed just now, but lots of conflicting reports um, coming out of the US just now. And there's been a lot of excuses to take a little bit of profit taking and a little bit of money off the table, especially when we have been trading near all time highs. Looking at the UK 100, you can just see the state of that volatility. We were trading very very um, low, just below his potential support before uh, Posner spoke yesterday. Um, but then after um, after his statement about being a lot more hawkish uh, about the uh, US economy, even though GDP came out at minus 2.9 and then consumer spending was weak, uh, the markets took that to be quite uh, positive. Spike back up again, but now we're drifting a little bit lower just now. So potential resistance at 6774, then potential support at 6713. Japan 225 actually came off a fair amount yesterday and the yen, like dollar yen is pretty, pretty much for all the action is right now. Euro yen, dollar yen, any FX um, yen related pairs are good to look at just now. Um, multiple reasons for that, but um, safe haven is one aspect, but the US dollar has been giving up some gains right across the board. Canadian dollar as well is something you guys should have a little look at. But anyway, um, we're coming up close to uh, potential support at 14.977 on the Japan 225. You can just see the strength that's moved down bearish engulfing pattern we're trading below the 21 period sma this is not so good so let's have a look at the do at dollar yen which is um finally giving itself some traction in one direction not the direction that japan 225 wants it to go but quite a decent candle looks like we're going to rechallenge 101 spot 35 as potential support next potential support is at a 100 spot 80. now we've not broken it yet but this is the level to have a look at dollar yen traders keep an eye on this so then moving on to crude west texas which uh, it's not really doing too much actually it looks like it's kind of slowly grinding downwards we're still in this range so it looks to be that 105 to 107 spot 80 is a range we're at the bottom end of that range right now but i wouldn't be surprised to see that tick up towards the end of today as we head into the weekend because obviously a lot can happen um, obviously you've got syria uh, bombing targets in iraq right now um, there's a lot of stuff still going on in um, the Middle East. Ukraine peace process might actually help a little bit, but we'll see how things go. So gold's been very volatile as ever the last couple of sessions. You know, one minute interest rates are going down, next minute interest rates are going up. Um, you know, people need to make up uh, need to make up their own mind as to what's actually going to happen. But you can see by all these candles, we are pretty much closing bang on the same level every night. But these long legged candles in both directions are indicative of the volatility that we're seeing right now. So potential resistance remains at 1332. Um, and I still think this uh, symmetrical triangle uptrend line uh, is, is in play right now. You can see it's bounced off there multiple times. So this could be the start of an ascending triangle formation. So it's going to break out one direction or the other. So looking at euro dollar, it's also been very volatile as ever. It's still trading between two, ran two ranges. Uh, one spot 35.68 and one spot 36.45. Uh, finishing up with GBP USD. And I, I really want to show you another screen that I'm looking at. So I, I, I do look at a lot of equities as well. We're going to be looking at my pivot point screen in a second. But we're coming up quite close to potential resistance again at one spot 70.48. And that's after Kearney spoke about the UK economy, uh, his bid to try and cool the housing market um, was not really that strong, incidentally. So um, the uh, GBP is uh, uh, kind of rising the back of that. Obviously, there's been a lot of negative US dollar fundamentals come out as well. So one spot 70.48 is resistance, it's in play. It's already touched it this morning. Uh, and who knows what might happen because we do have UK GDP due at 9.30. And then we've got Eurozone uh, Consumer Confidence and then the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey due at 2.55. Uh, so lots of stuff still going on. So let's have a look at my uh, at my um, PowerPoint screen. And as you guys will be able to see there, these are a, a, a kind of a selection of equities that I have a look at, mostly major stuff. So pivot points are a very useful technical indicator um, that I utilize. These are one minute charts that I've actually got on here. I can see that uh, Lloyd's actually been quite volatile the last couple of days. It's bouncing off the uh, 
out. The first pivot point level on here, around about 75.33. Do keep an eye on that level. Barclays having a little bit of a move back up. Again, it's, it's, it's hitting its pivot level here at uh, 216. Um, I'm just kind of trying to highlight some uh, some kind of levels that would be will be important. BT Group bouncing off. Uh, well, this was a potential S. To the R2 line, which is at 389. Um, Rio Tinto as well, already this morning bounced off the first support level around about 3120. Um, Sports Direct is uh, bouncing off its uh, pivot level here at 717, and uh, Vodafone's not really kind of doing that much right now. Uh, pivot points are very useful if you're trading equities. It does help to highlight um, potential support and resistance levels, especially if you're looking to get uh, involved in day trading equities. Um, these are um, it's a useful thing to do as long as you do a lot of your other research as well. Uh, pivot points can be added onto your charts um, uh, by just going to the technical indicator section and going to the study section. So um, do keep your eye on that. And join me again on Monday to find out what happened next in the global markets.